Painting a room in your house will give it a new look and feel, but there are a few things to keep in mind in order to achieve the best result. When painting interior rooms, you're going to need drop cloths, newspaper, block it, and masking tape to protect your floor. You can also use masking film to protect the walls and also doors and windows. You're going to need a painter's tray, a roller, paint brushes, a painter's bucket, and also paint stirrers too to mix up the paint. You can use a paddle or you can use an electric one which connects to your drill. In addition, you will also need your undercoat and your final coat, and not to mention something to clean the tools with. For those hard to reach places, use a step ladder or an extender pole for your roller brush. Not to forget your safety equipment, gloves, overalls and safety goggles. Remember to prepare your walls as we showed you in the episode on preparing surfaces. Sugar soap the walls, fill in any cracks and rough surfaces and also sand it down so it's nice and smooth. Then you can move on to the next step. To protect your floors you're going to use a drop sheet or a drop cloth but normally when it pushes right up against the wall it gets in the way of the paintbrush so what I like to do is actually just put down some newspaper and then some masking tape so it allows it to seal right up against the wall and then bring the drop cloth over on top of that. Once you've finished masking your floor, pull your drop cloth up. And now we're going to mask our fittings. Basically, you're going to get paint going everywhere when you're painting your room. So try and cover up as much of the stuff you don't want paint on. You can fill in the rest with some newspaper or just carry on with more tape. Finish off the rest of your fittings and then start on your doors, windows, corners, anything you don't want paint on. Now you'll see I've used Block It on the painted surfaces and masking tape on the cupboards, non-painted surfaces. The reason why is basically the Block It is a lot less adhesive, so it's not likely to pull your paint off when you remove the tape. Once you've finished masking up your wall, it's now time to mix your paint. We've got our undercoat here. Now as you can see, it's actually separated quite a bit, it's supposed to be white. So you can use a flat paddle to mix it up. It takes a while, you've got to mix it for about five minutes, or you can cheat and use one of these. These are much more fun. Just start it off slowly, otherwise it's going to spray paint everywhere. There you can see the paint mixing. Just continue for a good few minutes until it's completely all white and well mixed in. Once you've finished mixing your paint, you're now going to decant some into a painter's bucket. I'm just going to get rid of this. Put that into a bucket of water and wash it out just now. You need a little mess like that, just give it a wipe up. The reason why is later on you'll find that all those drips end up going down over your instructions on the back of the can. It's quite awkward to read later on, trust me. When you're finished with the paint, make sure you put the lid back on. It just stops it from evaporating, drying out, and if you do bump it over, it's not going to make a big mess. An important step before you start painting a wall is cutting in. Now this is basically painting in the areas where you can't reach with a roller. For example, where two walls join on the edges of doors. Continue cutting in for the rest of the room. Once you've finished cutting in, you can either wash your brush out or you can wrap it in some plastic or some cling film so it's ready to use again a bit later on. Now that we've cut in, we're now going to apply the paint with our roller. Now remember, always start off with a W pattern. You'll see why now and then spread the paint in between. Always work from right to left. And don't forget, this is quite messy. You get a lot of paint spatter. So wear a cap and some goggles. 
Roll your wall right to left and reverse if you are left handed. That way you're less likely to accidentally touch and mess up the painted surface with your hand or elbow. Be sure to overlap each stroke so that you get a nice even pattern. Don't forget to overlap over your cut in lines. One layer of undercoat may be sufficient depending on what paint you're going to be putting on top. If you had a dark base underneath beforehand, you may need to apply two coats of undercoat, especially if you're going for a lighter shade on top. If you do notice any drips, fix them quickly while they're wet, otherwise you're going to have to sand them down later. Once your undercoat is dry and you've got enough coats on there, you can now apply your top coat. Same again, we're going to cut in all around the sides, around the doors, the windows and the fittings, and then we'll go on to our roller. If your final coat is going to be a deep dark colour, it's a good idea to use a tint in your undercoat to get a bit more closer to the final colour. Once you've finished cutting in, we're now going to use the roller again. Now remember, start off with a W pattern, going back over it, blending all the paint in. And remember, this can be quite messy, so put your cap on. When you've finished your first coat, Wait for it to dry before you apply the second coat, and then check afterwards if you need a third. A good tip to find out if there's any places that you've missed when rolling on a wall is to use a torch or a bright light. It will highlight the dry and wet spots. Once your paint is dry, it's now time to pull off all your masking tape. But before you just rip it all off, be very careful, pull it off gently, and where you see places where the paint has actually been peeled off as well, just take a knife and just score that edge and then you can carry on pulling it off. Any bits which need to be touched up can be done afterwards. Once you've finished removing the masking from the ceilings and the doors and windows, don't forget your light fittings, and then lastly, do your floor, and move the drop cloth away at the end, that way any dirt that falls down is not gonna go onto the carpet. And there you have it, a beautiful white wall that will brighten up any room. Now remember, if you have any queries or need any help, Go down and see the guys at Builders and they'll be more than happy to help you.